So today we're going to be taking a look at rebuilding a center post or swivel, whatever you want to call it. This one is out of a snorkel 60 foot man lift. So this is the top and the hoses all hook up into this from the house and this can turn. This part swivels inside of this housing and there's Teflon seals dividing it all out. So, you know, one of these fittings will connect to this. One of the other big ones is on the other side. And that allows you to swing the machine as many times as you want and you don't have hoses getting tangled up. So this is in every excavator, main lift, rotator, anything that swivels and has hydraulic power underneath for the tracks or tires, drive system, things like that. So, I've never rebuilt one. We're going to see what it takes. Basically, there's this big snap ring down here, which I have these big snap ring pliers. Pull that off, and then one way or another, we're going to slide this center section out. I'm not sure how hard it's going to be to come out of there, but we're going to find out. So, let's see what we can do on the snap ring here. You make a post. I'm making a video. What? Making a video currently. And now, I'm not sure what it takes to get this back out of here. Not much. I can do this radio with power. Yeah? Because this is quite ridiculous. Alright, well. I'll be out and try to keep the dirt out of this thing. Well, that was easy enough. So you can see each section is divided out. So the oil is trapped in these rings. And the whole thing's in this nice smooth barrel. And in each ring, there's a port going to the outside. So what was happening is either this end or this end was leaking. And you'd end up with oil dripping out of this thing. But obviously if these ones leak, it leaks internally. So it'll kind of hurt the way the machine works, but it's not going to leak on the floor. So, go ahead and... I have to pay attention now they have these backup rings behind the these are more like just an kind of like an o-ring on the ends i know the new kit these are teflon but yeah let's see what we got what's that could you cut this out even and put something else in it like even if That's you cut wondering. it from the top and you then machine like a, a you machine to step down in that yeah and then machine a sleeve to put in it. Get yeah. welded across the top then. I don't even know if you'd need to because it's trapped. It's trapped in there by the snap ring. So if you did a thin... But I'm worried about it leaking because you'd have oil here that could get behind it and come up if you uh, put that in there. So you'd have to seal it. I guess it depends how tight it is. The problem here is these little... There's little tiny pits hard to tell but it's right where that top seal is sitting on there because then the water the rain water comes down this and sits in that seal there and it has pitted this and it looks like somebody tried to hone it the last time they rebuilt this but those pits are so deep that honing it isn't really going to help you any So we were just talking about if it's possible to weld up the pits and then machine it back down the lathe. I don't know what the best route is to take. That's an awful lot of them to, to weld up. I'm not saying it couldn't be done, but weld them all up and then machine it close and hone it again. But you're going to have to hone it kind of big. That's my concern is where, what is your bore diameter limit? Where are you going to end up at? Go ahead and see what kind of measurement we can get on her.
5.501 on there. 5.401, I'm sorry. 4.501. It's a 4 to 5 inch mic. It's a little bit... A little bit looser. Yeah, it's not bad there. Well, you can tell somebody was... Somebody was definitely honing pretty hard on the top here. Let's get a measurement up here. Yeah, it's about 5.04. So, so, well, the top of this swivel whatever you want to call it it's all pitted inside there and it looks like somebody just recently you know honed it to death it's like three thousandths bigger at the top but there's all these pits so like you're nowhere near getting them out of there with that hone and and right. and they're right in where that top seal ring goes okay and i'm just wondering if the easiest course is to kind of machine out that whole area and make yourself kind of like a cam bearing that you'd press in there yeah so we're gonna load all this up head out to chaos see about machining this down and uh making a ring so shouldn't be too bad probably gonna end up a long day of that but we'll see what happens so i found this chunk three quarters thick five inch od over in the scrap I'm gonna take it in the lathe and turn the OD down to probably somewhere right in like four and five eighths. And then I'll bore that out of this outer housing. And I'll machine the inside of this donut out close, rough it in more or less, press it in, and then weld the top. And then the last step will be going and bore that bushing out and hone it back to smooth. And uh, so we'll get to machining. We'll be using a Hawes TL2 tool room lathe for this, tucked back here in the corner. It's a pretty handy old girl. Taking the death burgers on. Thank you. 
this is an adjustable true shot, so you can move it once you tighten your jaws. So I want to align off this center bore with the indicator so that we're good and concentric to indicate off once it's pressed into the housing. We're not bad here, we're like three to four thousandths out, about four thousandths, it's not bad. That'll work. So, get this out of the way. Switch back to our OD tool. We're going to go to 4.875 here and face this from. Offset. We'll set this up as tool one. I'll do tool two. So we do 4.945, and then we go ahead and press F1. And that, no, nope, sorry, 4.945 X diameter measure. Have it in there, and that sets this tool offset. And we just bump up against the front of the part and press the Z face measure. That tells the lathe where it is in the Z. So we'll do that. And press C phase measure. And what I'm going to do is check where we're going to end up. So we'll come down here to position the Z origin. So it zeroed out Z in the workers. Because what I want to make sure here is that when we come back, we don't hit the jaw. So if I program this as 0.8 thick, that's 0.799, and we're fine. So if I program that as 0.790, we'll be good. So we come in MBI, conversational, back out to an OD turn. We're going to do tool tubes, so that's what we just set up. And four, we're at zero. Outside diameter is 4.945. So let's measure that. Diameter to cut, that's what we want to go to. We're going to go 4.875 eventually. I want to do 4.90 so that we can check our dimension. And this is that Z dimension I just talked about. So we we'll do 0.790. Depth of cut, 20 thousandths, that's fine. Six thousandths per rev. Max of that, surface speed. I bump that up a hair. Okay, so this should be good to go. And let's, see, let's put her back in freewheel. Get it out of the way. Turn the rapid override down to five, and when you hit the green button, it'll start this program. Right now, it wants us to change to tool two, so we have tool two. Gonna ease in and start cutting. So you usually take more of an air cut on that first pass. We did start cutting into it on this side and the back side before. And then you'll be able to watch how close we get up to those jaws. Good to go. We can speed the wrap it up now and let her do her thing. 
and then uh, we're going to measure it and see where it comes out. See how much better that surface finish is where it has some meat there. It's 4.94 is the diameter it's cutting right now. I'm gonna try to get, cut it again, but I'm just gonna stop it there. It has to do with the way that macro works. Let's see how we did. Right on the money, 4.90. So I'm just going to go ahead and change the program here. Start at 4.90 and go to 4.875. And uh, everything else will stay the same. Let it rip. Increase the feed right here since it's not cutting anything. Go back down. This is 4.895, so it's leaving 20 thousandths for the next pass, which is good because then you can see when you're taking too thin of a cut until the surface finish is terrible, it doesn't get enough bite to get under the radius of the cutting edge of the carbide insert. With the ground high speed seal, you might get away with that 5,000 cut. And this is the last pass. Go ahead and measure that. And uh, I'm also going to face the front of this, put a nice chamfer on there for pressing. And that's it for this thing. We're going to eat all of this meat out once it's pressed in there. I want something so we can, I don't want to go thinner than this because the jaws are going to try to expand, turn this thing into a triangle. So this way it's still thick enough we can have some meat here to make a round circle. And once we press it in to the housing, we'll put the housing back in the lathe and, and take that all out. Next thing we're gonna have to do is bore this housing out. That's where that bushing we just made is gonna get pressed into. So I'm just cleaned off this bottom surface good. I'm gonna let it just ride right up against the chuck. And then uh, center them up real well. Four point eight seven oh seven two, you know, three to five thousandths press. Just fine.
So that's the point there where it's furthest up. So we'll draw a little lease in this one here. Made the difference. Within about thousands there, so we're gonna go ahead and call that good. And uh, we're not going to turn this real fast. It's not going to be super balanced with all these different fittings on it. But we'll keep her, you know, 300 RPM or so. That'll be all right. Tools dialed in. All right, so we check our numbers. We're going to run this to 4.870. Let's check the ring again. It's 4.874. So we adjusted this diameter. We checked it here. So we're just going to go for it. Should have four thousands of press fit. So even if we're a couple hundred, two thousands, and we're gonna weld this thing anyway, so it's gonna be fine. Pretty silly. We're still gonna send it. Send her on in there and uh, let her go to work. Hopefully we don't miss and scrap this whole thing. We just have to make a new donut, I guess, worst case. Get past this first one. I should have enough chip load to break that. We have to. I'll stop and pull it out. Checked it, we're at 871, so we got 3,000 suppress. It's gonna be plenty for what we're doing. Go ahead and get her pressed in there and weld that ring in, and then we'll be back in to bore all that material out, hone it, and call it good. Knocks her into slow. I was watching it either. Yeah, say so I don't think I say it's not bumping the gate. No. When it started pushing the table down. So we're fused in there with the TIG welder. 
give me a quick little wash, you know, throw her back in the lathe and start boring on the string. Soon enough I can put this indicator in and get off the original diameter. There's just one spot that's weird. I don't know what that's about, but it is what it is because we're really good shape otherwise. So we're just gonna send it. We got our new seal kit here, and what they are, Teflon rings for each of these. We get backed up by this little O-ring, and then the outside, and this big O-ring, and then there's like a backup ring, which you can see the backup ring here is on the outside of that O-ring on both places, so. See how hard it is to. Shouldn't be hard to get them off anyway. We can break that if need be. Let's see what we got there. See, these ones aren't. I don't know that those are really a Teflon. And, uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it's some sort of a plastic deal. And then it has the little O-ring preloader, whatever you want to call it, underneath. So I'm going to pull all these off and get her cleaned up, ready to install the new parts. So I went and gave this thing a, a, a bath, cleaned all the crap out of everything here. Same thing with the housing. Go ahead and start putting it together. So these backup rings are the first thing on in that slot and then this. And they do have kind of a, a concave side, so I'll put the that towards the hoe ring. See what we can do with the Teflon. That's just a little bit of WD 40. Keep jumping them down around the ring and see what we can do. I think it might just take a little time for this Teflon to 
to shrink back up after that stretch. Because as you can see, it is pretty big right now. Okay, she's all in that groove. Yeah, it's it's kind of big, but it should take back to its original state with a little bit of time. That's what they normally do on a hydraulic cylinder anyway. Okay. Or be doing mm -hmm. it. Just a scotch, yeah. That's oh, that, that's lots, lots of scotch. That's good. That'll slip her right in. If it's not good and lubed, it's going in dry. It, it's, not, not it's not lubed. It's not a good idea. Oh, yeah. This is the right way, right? That goes right in. These are the non-compressed coverings now. <laughs> Let me take a little tap on this. Oh, oh my. Let me give it to her. Got it? Yep. Got one? Looks like it needs to go that way a little bit more. I'm just making sure that O ring is yeah. not. Hold on, that. I don't like the way that backup ring is like folding up around there. Okay. See, that that is the biggest one. Is that just like this one? It's like hmm. way up. And you hit that. You're touching it. What if we put a uh, big socket right over that side? We could hit it with the uh, steel hammer. Oh, wow. Let's do it with the press. <laughs> It's down. I mean, it moved like at least a sixteenth of an inch. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that rubber is all rolled up and up. It's almost like if you go a little know. further and then back it up and then go. I doubt that thing's rolled up because it, it went in without pushing it up out. Oh, uh, that's true. You know, usually if it rolls them, they'll come, you know, mm -hmm. flying out of the hole, cut up. Yeah. Do you have a brass on or do we just run that socket? This side's higher. Yep, it didn't go. I'm not sure if I took those earrings off in one piece that were on there. If I cut them, I cut them all off. I don't know if I cut the end ones. No, we got that set. 
Those are pre-sized, actually.